Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. Hope you're having a good day. My name is Denskill and I am recovering from gear acquisition syndrome. Uh, today's video is a semi-serious look at gas, as it's called. I want to look at gear acquisition syndrome as it's something that's affected me and I see it affecting quite a few of my uh, friends and colleagues in the uh, guitar playing and music community and it can be taken lightly or you know it might actually be affecting you in certain ways and so I wanted to use this video to have a quick discussion on it and I look forward to hearing you know your comments and what you think about uh, gear acquisition syndrome, you know, is it real, is it even a thing? I'm gonna talk about it in terms of other addictions as well. When we, when we look at gear acquisition syndrome, we gotta think about, you know, really is it a joke, what is it really? And when you compare gear acquisition syndrome to say other addictions, it has a, a few things in common in the sense that it can really mess with your life and your normal routine if it gets to a certain point. So much like many psychological issues out there, uh, and I'll give it a caveat that although I do have a bit of a background in it, I am by no means uh, an expert in psychology. When you look at the categorization of disorders and things that can affect a person's quality of life, there's definitely a spectrum out there. And, you know, anything can really become a problem or an addiction uh, if it gets to the point where, you know, it's messing with your relationships, your job, you know, your financials, if it's taking up too much time in your brain, and if you're neglecting other activities in your life, you, know, you might be doing some behaviors such as, you know, hiding and lying about, you know, whatever it is you're addicted to. And in this case, we're talking about gear. So... Gear, you know, is, uh, and guitars, and I'm talking things like guitars, pedals, uh, amps, uh, heck, even keyboards, you know, anything kind of music related. Uh, some people are addicted to just audio equipment, right? Uh, again, it's a wide spectrum of things that are, that are cool that we can get ourselves sucked into. As I say, it's a slippery slope because there's always something more. There's always something better out there. That's kind of how the addictive uh, mind works is you're always looking for something better and something that enhances your experience. As it relates to gear, I particularly think that guitars are really cool and pedals are cool and amps are cool. You can see behind me, I post my stuff up on my wall so that I can look at it because I really think guitars are a mix of a few different factors which immediately makes them cool and you know gives them the potential to be addictive. First of all from a visual perspective you know they look cool they're sort of the perfect blend of, of art and technology they're creative uh, devices themselves besides the looks uh, guitars are also social machines they're things that you take to play with people and you go to see shows where people are using musical instruments and equipment and effects so there's an inherent connection that you have with other people by playing a musical instrument it's so much fun getting together with with friends and bandmates and and playing for people it brings people together and you know the technology involved with guitars and, and equipment these days is is mind-boggling it's come so far in such a short period of time so no wonder we kind of get sucked into how uh, you know attractive musical instruments and gear are you know how can you not it's hard to resist especially for people that have a tendency to really get into things like to like to go to the furthest mile on on whatever it is they're into enthusiasts we can call them that's that's definitely me once we understand these factors involved with it how we get going on these instruments the tied to historical music that plays an important part in our life. There's just a huge uh, a world of factors associated with musical instruments and how we relate to them. We obviously get sucked into them and in some cases take it too far where we're spending a lot of money on it. We're, we're occupying a lot of our time in our minds and in our YouTube and our social interactions about gear and equipment and these are just let's not forget 
These are just pieces of technology, wood, metal, wire, plastic. I wanted to understand the underlying cause as to why, in my particular case, I got a case of gear acquisition syndrome there for a few years there and how I sort of got around it. Uh, a recent period of buying and flipping guitars uh, and amplifiers and things like that. And I managed to pull a plug on the gas because I came to that realization. I came to that acceptance uh, that I saw that I was spending a lot of money and a lot of time. I became mindful of the amount of time and energy and money and everything like that I was spending on my stuff. So I definitely had a sound in my head that I wanted to achieve and and uh, I wanted the capability to get there with, with my guitars, pedals, and amps, but also a very simple path. I didn't want to overcomplicate things. I was looking for some sort of perfect gear setup that I could use for a live situation, recording, uh, you know, jamming, that kind of thing. I had made up my mind that I had wanted to get certain pieces of gear to achieve that, and after that, I was that was as far as I wanted to take things. And um, so I recently flipped a bunch of gear and just sold one of my PRS guitars. You guys might have seen it in my PRS comparison video. So I've still got my CE24, my Custom 24 behind me. But my McCarty 594 has been sold to pay for an amp, which I will show you guys in an upcoming video. Once I had moved that uh, asset, it was it was a big emotional move for me because that guitar meant a lot a lot to me. I bought it at a particular time in my life, spent a lot of time with it, and I really wanted this amplifier. And you know, I couldn't have them both. They were just. just the capacity, the mental space of having them both in, in, in my head was just too much. So something had to move. For financial reasons too. I don't want to carry that, have that much money tied up in, in expensive gear that these days I'm not using too much during pandemic times. Hopefully that all turns around for us soon. What did it for me was establishing, you know, a limit, a goal of saying that I've got you know, this particular set of guitars and, and equipment, and I'm good. I'm going to play the shit out of it until until it falls apart, or I, or I do. I was successful in kind of arresting the behavior a little bit because I was like, you know what, I am, I am spending so much time. I just looked at the time. If I had, say, an hour of free time, I looked at that free time is spent totally playing the instruments and using the gear not as looking at stuff watching youtube videos because that's time that i won't get back i'd much rather be practicing playing maybe recording filming silly videos like this one to enjoy the actual experience of music and the and being there and being present so i reestablished my my gear goal as to have that set amount of equipment and that was it i was just saying forget about anything else or new i don't need i couldn't i didn't want to create a need for something else i decided that i was full up um you know financially and space wise so i actually reorganized my my room a little bit to make it a little more organized so that i could see everything and get a sense of what it is that I had access to, which also fed my OCD in a way because that's a beast that won't go away either. I'm going to have that OCD thing for the rest of my life, but I don't want the OCD thing to be a channel through which, you know, lots of gear funnels through. I'd like to be able to manage and maintain and control it because once you get a lot of gear, you know, there is the issue and the question of maintaining it, keeping it clean, keeping the strings fresh keeping the tubes changed that gets expensive too the question that we always hear you know very popular you know on youtube and with other channels is you know how much gear do you need how many guitars is enough i think that question is a better answer if you take the time to kind of look at really what's driving you to get your gear and, and if you're looking at maybe how much time you're spending how much you're really using your stuff that can maybe get help you get a better sense of you know if you've got enough instruments or maybe you need to shed a little bit there's the more is more argument 
I guess just healthier to be able to do a little more with with a little less. It just feels cleaner and more efficient. Think about the fact that you know you won't have to deal with any guilt or shame, hiding gear from your wife or your partner. Your bank account will be healthier. You know you can look yourself in the mirror and say, "Yeah, I'm still cool." <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, I'm not going broke, broke, broke. Yeah, so with that in mind, this has been a bit of a wordy video. But I'd really love to hear your comments and thoughts on gear acquisition. Like, I really do think it's a thing. I know I've been affected with it. But I found a way uh, to say, you know, enough is enough. Just really by being mindful of uh, and paying attention to, you know, how much time and money and effort I was spending chasing gear rather than using it. That's kind of what made me come to the conclusion that hey, I can take a break. I've had enough right now. So I'd love to hear your stories. Lots of YouTube YouTubers are hot I'm all about gear. Are you watching YouTubers channels based about gear? My next video is going to be about a piece of gear, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. Take care of yourselves and love you all. Have a great day.